In this video, we want to explore respiratory physiology and how it interacts with yoga asana. We will detail the mechanics of respiration, cellular respiration, gas diffusion in the lungs, and respiratory control as it occurs in the brain and brain stem. We will also discuss the specifics of yoga practice and how changes in posture and conscious breathing affect respiratory physiology. We will discuss an approach to energy consumption of the body, the meditative mind, and the integration of the eight limbs from a physiological perspective. As we said before, the primary function of the respiratory system is the supply of oxygen and the removal of carbon dioxide. In order for this to occur, there must be a movement of air in and out of the lungs. This vital process that begins respiration is called ventilation. Ventilation is the movement of bulk air in and out of the lungs. It uses changes in lung volume to move air in and out of the lungs along a pressure gradient. Changes in lung volume occur due to actions of the respiratory muscles. The rate and depth of respiration is mediated in the respiratory centers of the brain to meet current metabolic needs and can respond on a second-by-second, second, if not minute-by-minute, minute basis. Yoga asana uses conscious control of breathing to induce a calm state of mind. It also uses conscious breathing to regulate the respiratory rate and oxygen supply and to indirectly regulate the heart rate and blood supply. Changes in posture will affect the performance of the respiratory muscles. Some asanas will directly challenge and strengthen specific respiratory muscles while inhibiting others. Yoga asana also integrates breathing and movement. Yoga asana uses the mechanical aspects of ventilation to enhance the practice and to increase respiratory and cardiovascular performance. The basics of ventilation is the movement of air in and out of the lungs. It works based on differences in a pressure gradient, and bulk air moves independently of gravity. Air will move in and out of the lungs the same whether we are standing up or standing on our head or lying down. All this not as an exhaustive look at the brain, but rather to give you an idea of what it means when people say yoga is good for higher brain function, and to show all of the things that happen in the brain when we do something as seemingly simple as warrior pose or handstand. Due to the challenging nature of the postures and the recommendation for a regular respiratory rate while practicing, yoga asana offers a powerful tool for improving higher brain function in communication between the cortical and subcortical areas of the brain. Physically speaking, yoga asana can increase the range of motion of the muscles, making them more limber. It can also increase cellular and muscular efficiency. It improves cardiovascular and respiratory function. In this way, yoga asana is easily understood as a physical exercise for the body. It will lengthen our spine, improve our posture, and make us long and lean. This is, however, only a small part of yoga practice. Most of what happens during yoga asana occurs in changes in the brain. This schematic represents the various areas of the brain and what each area might be concerned with while we practice. One of the major goals of practice is to slow down this brain activity, to coordinate it, and to make it graceful. As the asanas become more familiar, the hectic brain activity will slow down. As we become better at breathing with the postures, the subcortical signals from the brain will fall into a nice rhythm that promotes deep breathing, a lower heart rate, and graceful movement. As we become more comfortable with backbends and inversions, the brain will quiet and become more comfortable. The fight-or-flight reflex will gradually subside. We are able to focus more on the teacher's voice, in the finer points of our alignment, in our breathing, 